Next week, Austin City Council is expected to finalize the budget for the upcoming year and how it will affect you. After the city manager put forth a record high $5.9 billion proposal, council members have been proposing some different changes and we've even heard about some proposed cuts. So we've been sitting down with your, your council members to get some insight and joining us today is council member Zoe Caudry of District 9. Thanks so much for joining of us. Of course, I'm so excited to be here today. So your district stretches from Hyde Park through West Campus mm -hmm. downtown and even across the lake. So it's a very interesting district to look at. We know you heard from many members and constituents, neighbors in all of these neighborhoods at a town hall uh, just a few weeks back. Talk to us about what were some of the biggest things you heard from these neighbors that you represent? What do they want out of this budget? Yeah, I was so thankful for everyone who came out to the, our town hall. Uh, you know, we heard things ranging from affordability to mobility issues, uh, public safety and homeless, homelessness were, were really big uh, top of mind uh, topics that came up. Uh, so just really appreciated everything that you know folks kind of brought to the table uh, and a lot of the things that people were, were you know talking about and, and that were really passionate to them are things that you'll see in this uh, upcoming budget and it was honestly things that we had already prioritized uh, as an office for um, for the budget. Mm, good to see those two things aligning yeah. your priorities and your constituents. Yeah. Uh, we know one of the biggest topics of conversation this budget cycle has been addressing homelessness in our city, uh, especially this week. There's been a serious focus on that. For you, what is your biggest priority when it comes to funding uh, ways to, to address and prevent homelessness? Yeah, I mean, I think one big thing is a continue, an item that's a continuation of last year, which is the Mental Health Diversion Center. Uh, so making sure we get funding for that. Uh, you know, the HEART program is something that the Downtown Austin Alliance uh, kind of spearheaded as a pilot program. Uh, we've seen a lot of success uh, around the, the HEART program, so wanted to make sure that becomes a permanent fixture. Uh, and then also making sure that we get folks permanent supportive housing and making sure that folks uh, have, the, have the resources they need to get back on their feet. You mentioned the HEART program yeah. there. I want to zero in on that. Talk to uh, us about what that is for people who haven't heard of that pilot program. What is it and why do you want to see it fully funded? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, so it's a program that I guess the Downtown Austin Alliance had spearheaded, that Urban Alchemy uh, had uh, helped kind of run. Uh, it's just to get resources out to our own house community to make sure that there's folks who navigate them to, uh, to get the help that they, they need. Uh, we've seen, you know, its effect in the downtown area. The pilot lasted for about six months, uh, mainly on 6th Street in, in Congress. Uh, we saw a lot of unhoused folks get into shelter. We saw a lot of unhoused folks uh, get into the proper, uh, you know, resource, you know, allotment that they might have needed, you know, making sure that they were there. Um, and we saw its effects on, on business owners who talked about how they were happy to see folks who might have been camped out outside of their uh, place of business, you know, off the streets and into into shelter. Mm -hmm. We saw it from residents, from visitors, uh, you know, treating folks like like people, right? And treating these uh, our unhoused neighbors who have might have fallen on a hard time, like like the people that, that they are, uh, and and making sure that they're able to get, you know, like I said, back on their feet and have the resources available. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the the budget as uh, as it is addresses these? Uh, needs fully or do you think there is more funding that should be allocated towards some of these programs in particular? I don't think the job's ever done. I think we did, we've done a lot of really great work as a dais uh, from the last budget cycle but just you know on, on a week to week basis you know conversations that happen, items that are brought up, you know policy that's been implemented and pushed uh, but you know the job's not done so I think this budget we're gonna continue to build on a lot of success from last year uh, we're going to continue to push, you know, the envelope and and get folks in the city, whether they're unhoused or not, the help they need to make sure that the city truly works for them. But I, I personally don't think the job's done. There's there's a lot more work to be done. Mm. We know one of the biggest topics of conversation among Austinites is affordability with mm -hmm. rising costs, inflation. So how do you balance, you know, funding all these programs with, uh, you know, balancing the cost that, that it may result on, on Austinites as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think it's about centering our, our priorities around, around people, right? I always talk about humanizing policy, humanizing uh, just the work that we do. So I think it's important to make sure that we are mindful of you know rising costs in X Y Z areas, but also making sure that we're able to still do right by our constituents and you know that they have the, the resources and everything that they need to make sure that the city you know works for them. Mm -hmm. 
we know this budget process is really a balance uh, yeah. in so many ways. We have heard at least one of your counterparts uh, on the council proposing some cuts to this proposed budget. Do you have any reaction to those, any specific areas uh, where you would agree with cuts or, or would oppose any cuts? I mean, I think any cuts that take away from someone's quality of life, whether it be a city employee, whether it be someone who's unhoused, I, I personally don't agree with. Uh, so I think we need to make sure that we prioritize our constituents uh, and not take away any sort of resources or not take away any programs uh, that ultimately benefit uh, you know, individuals or the community as a whole. Anything else that folks should know as they're watching this budget process progress, what should they be keeping their eyes on? Yeah, so we'll be voting on the budget um, 14th, 15th, and 16th of next week uh, of August. Uh, and tomorrow we have a budget meeting where all, all the council members will be laying out uh, their, their budget priorities. So I would encourage folks to tune in uh, and to continue to reach out to their respective council members uh, about what they really care about and what they hope to see uh, once we you know, hopefully adopt the budget. We know there's going to be a lot of headlines that come out of that for you all to follow. But so, Kadri, thank you so much for being here and, and diving into some of these issues with us. Of course. Thank you so much.